wait to introduce you to our panel of incredible talent. But first, in case you've been living under a pile of titan thumbs, um, <laughs> the Owl House follows intrepid teen Luce Noceda, who stumbles across a portal and is transported to a realm of witches, demons, and weirdos. There, she befriends powerful trash collector Ida Clawhorn. <laughs> Being that she's a human, she has no magical abilities whatsoever, but she forges ahead with her dream of becoming a powerful witch and winning all of our hearts in the process. Oh. Without further ado, are you ready to meet our guests? Yeah, 
I mean, I'd say it's been an absolute joy and a blast getting to do these two ridiculous characters. Um, I had no idea when the show started what their, you know, trajectories would be emotionally. I just knew that Dana loves drama um, and that things are probably going to get rough for at least one of them at some point. Um, uh, one of the great joys of the last season was uh, uh, I never had to cry on Gravity Falls. King goes through some rough stuff. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Um, and the Owl House taught me to cry on command as King. So I can't, I, I might do it during the panel if things get too emotional. <laughs> And how about King, or I'm sorry, Hootie, like when you, when you learned you were going to be a bird too, um, what do you, what do you do with that? What do you, what do you do with that? Dana, can I tell them the origin story of Hootie? Go for it. Yeah, so, um, uh, when Dana wrote the very first script for the first episode of Owl House, uh, she wanted just like a temporary track of voices to cut the drawings to, um, so I just sat down and did a bunch of voices, and as a joke, I did like the world's worst Mickey Mouse impression. <laughs> um, so the script said, you know, if you know, uh, if the door you seek to enter or whatever, and I just did this like, oh, oh gosh, oh boy, wow, oh, oh, oh. Um, and it's sort of it's like if Mickey just like had way too much sugar and was like, you put him in a washing machine and he spun around or something. And it was like I was kind of messing with her, and I thought she would be like, ha ha, Alex, um, but she was like, we're keeping this, and I'm like, what? <laughs> come into the booth and it's like, we've got 70 lines for Hootie. I'm like, what? <laughs> so I've had to learn to talk like this for extended periods of time. It's difficult. Um, but very rewarding. Zeno, you were a child actor and now you are everywhere, like in the best of ways. Every actor. <laughs> Tell me how, like, what's your favorite part about where you're at in your career right now? Um, I, I just like being able to be part of cool stories and, like, uh, ex, you know, uh, acting and, and exploring a lot of, like, you know, as Alex said, there's a lot of emotions that get explored in the show, and I, that's, like, the sweet stuff of acting for me, so getting, uh, being able to dig into that and a character like Hunter and, like, all, you know, I just did the Big City Greens panel and, like, all these characters that I play that you may or may not know me from. It's just, like, a blessing and an honor to just be able to do that, to be able to tell all these stories. Uh, I have, yeah, I'm, I'm very blessed. I'm, I'm having fun. <laughs> very special guest who has just made it. Uh, she is everyone's favorite cotton candy can yeah. sweet. <laughs>
for me, that's such an astute uh, way of putting it because that is actually what I feel the most about this career that I've had is that like the most special part about it is that you find pieces of every single character, every single story that you kind of connect to personally and then that you really do take them with you. And I think like, you know, that is, it's kind of like built me and shaped me and I've been lucky enough to play all these unbelievable characters throughout the years and so to be able to sort of have them be woven into the fabric of who I am as a person and like my identity and what I carry with me is just really special and you know I think for me one thing about being able to be Amity is um, I just think like if something that I thought is so magical about her is kind of when we started she was like she's like complex she's complicated she was not you know it was really important to us when we began with Dana and stuff to kind of be like she has issues and she is dealing with some stuff that is difficult and it's, there's a lot of stress at home and she's complicated and you sort of you didn't really get to know her vulnerable side for a while you know she you, she, you sort of weren't really sure what her deal was obviously she wasn't that nice to you i apologize um and uh it was all it's family trauma okay it's generational trauma um and so i think like she was very you know she was sort of in this in this rut of being so obsessed with being perfect in her family and doing you know having to be this person and i think she sort of, when she went loose, she sort of started to realize that she didn't have to be that way and that she could sort of tap into her softer side and her more vulnerable side and kind of be, you know, find out who she really wanted to be without just getting lost in that same pattern. And I think for me, that's something that is always a really helpful reminder in my own life is to sort of make sure you're stopping to actually enjoy your life and have fun and be present with the people that you're around and sort of like learn from them and learn to kind of let go. And um, and I think like for me, that's been really a big part of uh, my relationship to this character. So for Sarah Moore and me. I love that you just like wrapped up acting like in a whole. Really like, and then I think it's so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sarah Nicole and Nikki, sorry, I can't call you Sarah Nicole because it feels weird. It's um, weird. <laughs> Nikki and May, what's it been like to, to voice this, these groundbreaking characters and have the fan reaction? The coolest thing <laughs> ever. Yeah. I honestly think like it's been the my, like the one of the most amazing shows I've been a part of when it comes to the fans. Like you guys have been like so passionate and so understanding. Uh, like above and beyond of what we were trying to do and what was important to us about these characters and so for me like it's been like really one of the most special things of my lifetime is to be able to connect with like this fan base because I feel like you guys really get it and you really love them you love these characters and like their relationship yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's um it's really weird because exactly what you're saying like this character is a part of you and it's like it might not be super, super, super close all the time, but then seeing that you guys get us, you know, it, it does, even though it's not, it's not you, it's part of you, it feels very loved, so thank you all for being so nice. I always consider myself so lucky to be able to be a part of a show like this and just like what it means and, you know, again, for me, like coming out as pan, bisexual. <laughs> show like this when I was growing up would have been just really cool even just to like we're saying how much we love these characters for um, and how much we love you guys for seeing us like and, and for understanding who we are I think that's you know something that would have been really cool to have as a kid and, you know um, and I think it's like great for everybody to sort of have that visibility and have that connection and be able to see themselves in you and and to kind of like know how loved you are and know like how we're, we're a part of you just as much as you're a part of us, you know? Uh, I have to ask the obligatory question. What has been your favorite experience working on this show? Like for me, watching, you know, when we book a thing, we don't always know what we're gonna get. Um, it's like, I hope it's good. Um, <laughs> but to be a part of this with the storytelling and, and the, the characters that you've included here and to watch it grow into the story it is, I'll be sending you my bill for therapy, by the way. Um, <laughs> you've never heard that before. Um, 
but also the fan reaction. I mean, it's something I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. Um, yeah, I, uh, my favorite experience, honestly, has just been even like most of the show was created through the pandemic and the challenge of doing that and having all these responsibilities and trying to make a fun, entertaining show through <laughs> a very, very difficult time for everyone on the crew. Um, it was so, it was so, so difficult. So honestly, the, the times that I um, hold nearest to my heart are the crew screenings that we've tried to do over Zoom or the few times we've been able to get together to watch a finished show uh, <laughs> totally illegally on the channel. <laughs> It's beautiful, like everyone did a great job. That's that's been the most rewarding thing to me. And of course seeing everyone's reaction is like so incredible because sometimes we're like, oh, is this are we gonna pull it off? Are people gonna like this? But okay, they, they like it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> we live another day. Um yeah. So uh, the, the best part has 
I think the best way to encapsulate, other than saying everything, is uh, kind of being grafted into very thematically this like found type of family, like uh, welcomed with so uh, such open arms by the cast and the crew and all the fans and like. Uh, Hunter is like a very uh, rich character that uh, I can explore and you often don't get that a lot uh, nowadays um, and uh, so it's like it's he's just been a great character to to dig into and uh, go uh, you know through all of this trauma with him uh, <laughs> you know uh, trauma for life uh, it, it, I just had a, a great time and interacting with all of you and all the fans and yeah I think this is a an excellent culmination of, of everything. So I'm, I'm incredibly blessed and thankful and fortunate to be a part of this. So I... okay. Man, I get to steal everybody's answers and put them all into one big cauldron and stir it up, make a potion. Basically, yeah, it's like, I think, you know, again, sort of like we were saying of like, you know, weaving together a fabric that you take with you, you know, a, a giant part of this has been a, I think the character development and the bold places that Dana was able to go with these characters and with this story and kind of like, you know, making their legacy really last. And I feel like to have, you know, complicated characters um, on a show is, it's a real, pleasure to be a part of something like that and characters that grow and that change and then you you see their arc. Um, I think that's something that's kind of rare and so I think we were able to really go to some difficult places, some complicated places and dealing with romance and friendship and family and you know all of these sort of really human themes in this completely non-human, well almost non-human world and I feel like you know that that's something really special when you can really bring that groundedness and that reality into kind of a magical world. And so, you know, it was a pleasure to come in and get these scripts. And I know, like, again, when we were recording over Zoom, it was so fun. We would all be like, we'd be like, and then they kiss us! <laughs> developed or there was like it, it was such a journey to go on it as well as, a, as an actor and you know also um, with these characters and with these people and everybody who worked on the crew and behind the scenes like we were animating everything it was like it everybody was just so professional and you could really feel like the love and the passion you know from us and from everybody on the team as well as honestly like I hate to say the same thing everybody's been saying but I'm like this is the coolest thing ever like for us to have worked on this show and like love these characters so much and believe in them and push for them and fight for them to have the real like powerful story that they deserve and um and then to be able to see the reaction that that actually connects with people and that people care and feel that love as well it's like it just like now we're all part of the the fabric that i'll take with me forever like this the energy here in this room and like the love and the and the family that we like out are forever now will, will be is like something I can take with me forever and I feel really grateful to everyone here and to all of you guys for that for real. Yeah. Dana. 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 <laughs> People are dying to know if there is anything you can tease for us in the upcoming special, which drops Saturday, October 15th at 9 p.m. Oh. Thank you. No. Okay. Uh, except, yeah, yeah. Yeah, except for a couple uh, development designs from the first episode. <laughs> Don't even try. Don't even try. Time. <laughs> 
Okay. 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 All right. And you came up out of the ground and you said, 
No witches in Ivy? No witches in Ivy. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a big believer in community and relationships and support networks, and so for me, that line summed it all up for me. No witch is an island, and I love that. My name is, is Gabriel, and I'm a little chilly um, being in here with all of you guys. I'm sorry, with all of you guys. And I think I have a more animator's question, like, uh, since the beginning of the show, I've been feeling a lot of Zelda vibes during the show. <laughs> uh, really wanted to know how much of inspiration did you guys took from it? And like Majora's Mask, this last season. <laughs> and, like, Listen, our crew is filled with the most amazing nerds. <laughs> is when Breath of the Wild came out. So, <laughs> while there are no like direct references or direct like call, uh, uh, homages to Zelda, there is definitely a fair amount of um, influence that seeped in. I love Zelda. It's my favorite game series. Like, so, <laughs> if you're asking if it influenced us at all, yes, in very like subtle ways, for sure. Thank you very much, Emma. Of course. I'm really a friend, and uh, I'm just too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming here. Hi. Oh my god, hi. Uh, thank you all so much for the show. It's been incredible. And uh, I've been watching this with my cousins. It's a great way for us to bond. And we've gotten so much closer because of the show. And it's been amazing. So they're too young. They can't be here. They're in school. And so uh, my question is a group effort. So um, and hopefully this isn't too spoilery. Um, what's something you were looking forward to being in the show that ended Question, but um, more Rain and Ida episodes. Um, they've really become, for no other reason other than I think I, I can relate to Ida a lot on a personal level. level. I'm closer in age to them, <laughs> but I, I um, uh, they've just been become my favorite characters to write, and I think just one or two more episodes focusing on them would have been really fun and lovely. Least one in that too. Oh yeah, Luz would absolutely be like a part of you the narrator. I just know it's gonna be like her reactions, like every three episodes I'll just gonna be like <gasps> <laughs> Well what I really wanted to do was like we had that beautiful moment in Oh Titan Where Art Thou where uh Luz meets Rain for the first time and she's like, oh, I can't believe I'm meeting you, this is so great. Uh and I actually would have loved to make that an even bigger moment with more time. Um it's ah oh, I can't do it at this point. We did our best. <laughs> Um, but yeah, just more of them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, my name is Adriana. Before I ask my question, I just want to say that I love all of you guys so much. I'm a big fan of everybody, and May has been your biggest fan for like ever since I was 10, and now I'm 27. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you could have the opportunity to have a specific storyline played out in season three, should it have been the length it should have been, what would it be? <laughs> uh, let me let me think of something else because my immediate answer is just like more rain than Nina. We always did. Uh... Oh well, that's spoiling. We did. <laughs> nonsensical storyline and arc for Hootie that we never got to do that kind of showed his true origin. And we, do, we do end up hinting at it in the finale. It's just a little bit awkward. It's real subtle. Um, one, there was like, there is one single person in you know, the, all of the internet that predicted it perfectly and I was like, <laughs> Uh, but that would have been a fun episode to explore, and maybe people would have hated it, but I wouldn't have a good time. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Are you cosplaying as Alex? Be honest. <laughs> when I was at the Owl House panel in 2019, someone, I had to clarify that I was in fact not cosplaying as Alex. <laughs> I asked the very first question at that panel, who was about uh, uh, one story from standards and practices. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm back here again with my pen that I got at that panel. Wow. Cool. My question this time is not for you guys, it's for the audience. Can we give them a standing ovation? Thank you so much. Thanks for doing Thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> 
Camila how Camila would feel about Ida? Yes. Mom fight. I'm gonna ask you to turn it on. Understanding that some of these situations might have been unavoidable, some of them might have been avoidable, but uh, once she, once you meet Ida, it's very obvious that Luce, Luce's uh, safety is always kind of at the forefront. Her well-being is always at the forefront. I think Camila would pick up on that. And also tune in on Saturday at the Open. Hi, first off, you guys changed my life. I feel like a lot of trans and queer POC in the room can agree with that. I think we can all agree that the Lumity kiss was such a beautiful moment in the show. Yes. And also, because we were our students, right, on, a, on an animation level, yes. animation-wise, is there any chance that we get to see more of these kind of complex animations, like y'all speeding up the frame rate and everything, Tom <laughs> Marvel, you know, pulling in all those external people? Um, it's the finale specials, hell yeah! <laughs> Like, we want people screaming at their TVs like, Yes! Already doing that. Already <laughs> doing that. Thank you. I mean, we could stay here all day and answer questions and just hang out, but unfortunately, we're about to get the boot. So thank you so much. Hey, let's go!